In this video, you're going to learn how to use AI to learn AWS Cloud. And to do that, I'm going to ask Perplexity five questions about AWS. If you're new here, I'm Greg, creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud, and each week I create a video to help you easily navigate your AWS Cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe right now. In case you're not familiar with what Perplexity is, it's an AI-powered research and conversational search engine that allows you to enter a natural language query, and it goes out on your behalf, searches the internet with whatever your question is, and then it comes back with a concise output. Now, in traditional search engines that you might be used to, you'll enter in some sort of search term, or you'll ask a search engine a question, and you click enter, and then it presents you with a whole bunch of links. Now you gotta go to a whole bunch of links, whether that's go look at a video, go read a blog, go read some sort of technical document, and then you have to figure out what the answer is by aggregating all that stuff together on your own. Perplexity aims to eliminate that, and I'm gonna show you here right now with five questions how you can use AI and Perplexity to help you learn AWS Cloud. We're gonna start off with the first question here, which is, what is the most popular AWS certification? So let's say, you know, in this scenario, you were thinking about getting an AWS certification, and one question you might wanna know is, what is the most popular AWS certification? Let's see what Perplexity says. Now, what Perplexity is doing, it's churning through the internet, looking at multiple different resources, and it's gonna see if it can put together an answer for you. So let's take a look and see what Perplexity came back with. Based on the search results and industry trends, the most popular AWS certification is generally considered to be the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate. The SAA certification is often recommended as a starting point for those looking to build a career with AWS, and it provides a strong foundation in AWS services and architecture principles. Now, while there is no official report on what is the most popular certification, I will say in my humble opinion, as somebody who is actually an AWS Solutions Architect, the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Certification, not only is it very popular, I would say it's gonna help you in most all the other certifications that you're gonna go after and beyond certifications, definitely any job where you're working on cloud from a technical standpoint. So I'm definitely gonna give Perplexity a thumbs up on this answer. And now for question number two, let's throw Perplexity another one. How will the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate help my career? Well, let's find out. It's coming back with the answer and says, the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Certification can significantly benefit your career in several ways. So it's going to increase employability, salary boost, demonstrate your expertise, give you a foundation for more advanced certifications, it's industry recognized, it'll help increase your confidence, it'll enhance your credibility, it'll broaden your knowledge base, it'll help you with your problem solving skills, and it'll help you with career advancement. I'll tell you what, if you haven't considered that Solution Architect Associate, by the time you're done reading this, you're definitely gonna wanna take a look at it. I would say that these are right in line with what my expectations would be for the Solution Architect Associate and anybody planning to take that. So I would also give this question an answer from Perplexity a thumbs up. Now let's make things a little harder by asking more specific questions. So in our question three, we're going to ask Perplexity, which domains are covered on the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate? So we're really getting into uh, some of the details here and this stuff would be somewhat a little bit more challenging to find, but let's see what Perplexity comes with. And as you can see here in question three, the answer comes back and we get the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam covers four domains. So number one is designing resilient architectures. This domain focuses on designing architectures that are highly available, fault tolerant and scalable. It includes designing multi-tier architectures and decoupling mechanisms and choosing appropriate resilient storage. Domain two is designing high-performing architectures. This domain assesses the ability to select high-performing architectures and scalable solutions for compute, storage, network, and databases. Domain three, 
designing secure applications and architectures. I won't read the rest of that. And then domain four, designing cost optimized architectures. Now, what I wanted to do is also show you that if you scroll down a little bit, perplexity also gives you the opportunity to uh, ask some related questions, which they've auto-populated for you. But I'm going to ask a follow-up question that uh, I'm still going to consider this a part of question three. I'm going to ask, what are the percentages of each domain? So each domain is worth a certain percentage, and it didn't give us that in that original answer. So I'm going to ask that as a follow-up and see what happens. And this is exactly what I was looking for. So now we have a more concise view of each domain and we also have the percentage of that domain as it's going to appear on the Solution Architect Associate Exam. I really like the ability to ask a question. If for some reason you didn't quite get the response you wanted or you did get the response you wanted, but you want to dive a little bit deeper. In my case here, not only did I want to know what the domains were, but I also wanted to know what the percentages were. I could also enter the follow-up question as I've demonstrated to get that information quickly and easily. So I'm going to give question three also a thumbs up. Now, let's say you've long decided that you want to get that AWS Solutions Architect Associate certification and you are studying. So you're really getting in depth here. And the next question is a little bit more complicated than some of the ones we've asked before in question four. What are some best practices for designing an Amazon VPC? So if you don't know what an Amazon VPC is, it stands for Virtual Private Cloud. And let's click enter here and see what we get. And it's starting to churn through the answer here. Here are some best practices for designing an Amazon VPC. Number one, use separate VPCs for different environments. Two, design your VPC CIDR block carefully, leaving room for future growth. Number three, create subnets across multiple availability zones for high availability and fault tolerance. Four, use public and private subnets. And I will, I'll spare you by reading all of these, but just flipping through these, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. Now, as I mentioned, perplexity is actually going through the internet, looking at various resources, and it also cites the resources where it's pulling this information. So as you see here, one of the main sources that it's using is the VPC design best practices, which is directly from AWS. Now, you could go to AWS's website directly and try to hunt for these things, but when you go through perplexity, it's going through the websites for you and it's just making it so much faster, so much more efficient, and it's saving you a whole bunch of time. I'm really liking the feedback that Perplexity gave me on this question, number four. So I'm going to give this question a thumbs up as well. And for our last question, number five, I'm going to give Perplexity another architectural question that I'd like for it to answer about AWS. How do I design scalable and loosely coupled architectures in AWS? Let's see what perplexity comes back with. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. To design scalable and loosely coupled architectures in AWS, consider the following best practices. Number one, use microservices architecture. Number two, implement asynchronous communication. Number three, design for horizontal scaling. Number four, distribute traffic. Number five, implement stateless applications. Number six, use managed services. Number seven, implement caching. Number eight, design for failure. Number nine, utilize serverless architectures. And number 10, implement effective data storage. I'm really liking this answer, viable answer choices. And so I'm going to give question five and its answer also a thumbs up. Perplexity has both a free version and a pro version. All these questions that I asked Perplexity in this video are from the free version, and I was very pleased with the results, and I could see this as a very viable study tool as you're learning AWS Cloud. I highly encourage you to give this a try and see for yourself what you think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you can check out future videos. And before you go, check out this video right here, and I'll see you in the next video.